Hey guys, it is Saturday afternoon. We finally got a little sunshine out here, so I'm out grabbing a few pictures while I can. The temperatures are dropping. Today was a little warmer this morning. Foggy, we got some snow overnight, but as the day's gone on, it's gotten clear. But usually in Minnesota, when, in the winter, when the weather gets clear, we get those cold temperatures with it. So I guess tonight it's gonna be something like in the 20s or 30s below zero before any wind chills. So it's gonna be a, a little bit brisk tonight, you could say. So wanted to get out now while I could to make uh, a few pictures and do some things. And we're getting lucky, even though it's still early afternoon, um, because of the time of year and the sun being lower in the hemisphere at this, this time of year, even earlier in the day, I think it's about three o'clock right now, uh, sunset doesn't happen until around 4.30ish, somewhere in there, 4, 4.30. And but you get some of that nice golden color, so it's basically like having golden hour at two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, which is pretty awesome. So, trying to take advantage of that a little bit. And in the area I'm in here, I don't know if you can see behind me and around some of the clips I've I've added around this, but we're getting that sun coming filtering through the pines, and it's making these little splashes of light nice warm light on there and so it's really kind of a, a peaceful time thankfully not too much wind today which is nice because without the wind it's not quite as brutal out here but um that's what we're doing we're, we're taking some pictures and trying to enjoy it and there comes some clouds of course so we might actually get a decent sunset if i can find somewhere to set up to catch some foreground and sky elements together because there's not a lot of cloud cover but there's a, a few nice big clouds up there which might actually let us um, you know get some good color coming in on those one tip when you're shooting sunsets um, that many of you probably already know but something I like to remind people natural choice when we shoot a sunset is to look towards the Sun and you get all that vivid oranges and reds and golds but don't forget to look opposite the Sun as well because as that Sun comes down and starts skimming up over the atmosphere and hitting those clouds opposite the Sun Oftentimes that sky will just light up in the most beautiful just like pastel blues and pinks and purples and you get a lot of really really nice tones especially in the winter with that snow. They do give kind of a cold feeling image as far as you know portraying that sense of temperature and um, making it feel a little more cool outside but you get some very very beautiful colors that are very calming and they look great when you print them and put them up on your wall so something to remember there wanted to take just a minute to be mr ranty mcranterson for uh just a moment i have been contemplating now that i'm 75 this is episode 76 of these daily videos uh, making some changes i figured i didn't want to invest a lot of money in gear right off the bat because i didn't know if i was going to stick with it and i kind of approach this as just an experiment but i'm at a point now where i've decided i do want to keep doing these i'm enjoying them and i think there's a benefit uh, to be had from it not just for me personally to help drive more you know eyes to my photography or whatever it is but a benefit to people who maybe you know, are interested in learning a little more and quite frankly just interested in seeing a little more about what the northern Minnesota landscape areas have to offer. That being said, it's not that I'm going to focus entirely on landscapes, especially over the winter. I have a feeling I'm going to do some shows coming up as in terms of things like maybe some portrait work or lighting or things like that, but that's besides the point. What I wanted to rant about a little bit today is that up until this point, almost everything I've shot has been just on my iPhone 6S Plus with a little Rode Microphone Mini or Rode Microphone Me, I think it's called, that plugs into it. It's a great solution and it works well on the fly, but I'm running into some issues with battery life and stuff like that. So I've been looking at upgrading cameras a little bit and um, kind of finally settled on one or two cameras called up our local Best Buy store, which is about an hour, hour and 10 minutes away. Roads were a little slick today, so it took a little longer. I called them up before I left and asked them specifically, do you have this camera in stock and can I come to the store and look at it, check it out, see how it feels in the hand and, and get an idea of how it is. Oh yeah, absolutely, come on in, we've got that right here for you. So off I go, looking to hopefully by now be shooting on a brand new camera for you guys that's going to give a little better quality, a little more flexibility, but I get down there, I look around the store and I don't see it. So I decide, well, maybe they've got them somewhere else for the holidays, who knows. And I ask somebody and they say, oh, we actually don't carry those in store, they're an online only item. 
To which, of course, I was understandably a little bit miffed because I just drove an hour, hour and a half out of my way just to look at this camera and it's not there. It really, really irritated me. So the, the idea I had was, well, the closest camera store, we've got one in that same town, but they don't really carry much of this kind of stuff. They kind of got to the point where they're, they're carrying basically your Canon and Nikon gear and a few point and shoots and that's about it because it's tough for a camera store to keep stock and I get it because online is so difficult to compete with. There's no way to keep all of the different models in stock and hope you can sell them. But I called down to uh, a guy I know at the camera store down in the Minneapolis St. Paul area called National Camera Exchange and uh, this is a guy a salesman I've worked with many times we kind of refer to him as the Fuji guy because he's one of the few Fuji shooters that uh, are around the area and happens to work there at the camera store and so I wanted to talk to him and get his opinion on a few things because I trust his his opinion and his knowledge on this stuff and um, I just want to say a big thumbs up for National Camera Exchange and Pat. Um, I don't know if he'll ever see this, but um, you know, they, they just have such amazing service and I really wish I had a way to have a National Camera Exchange store up here in our area, even though I know business-wise it wouldn't make sense, there just wouldn't be enough business for it. And actually, if I decide to go through with it, I just have to call him up and he's gonna send the camera up to me, free shipping, um, let me check it out. If I don't like it, I can send it back to them. And you know, if I like it, decide to keep it, then they'll, they'll take care of me. But um, that was my rant. I mean, nothing drives me crazy more than when you call someone and ask them a specific question, you're driving down, they know that it's a big investment in gas, time, driving on slick roads, everything else. And they tell you, yep, it's right here, only to find you get there and never, ever existed. It was never something that was ever gonna happen. And unfortunately, you know, they say, well, the people that answer our phones are no longer in store. They're in some call center here and there. So they don't always know. But they didn't really have anything to say other than push the blame off on a call center. I mean, it's one of those things that I, I tell everyone when they're looking to buy a camera and they want my opinion. What should I buy? How should I get it? Where can I buy it? If you're not going to order it online because you know already exactly what you want, any chance you have to get to an actual camera store, you know, here we recommend, you know, I tell people all the time, the store in Duluth, uh, which is about an hour and a half away, or down to the cities. If you can make a trip down there, it's about four hours away, but it's well worth it because these guys know their stuff. They have a lot of the products and cameras right there, so you can pick them up, hold them, see what's going to fit well in your hand, get an idea what the menus look like, everything else, and give those guys your money. Spend your money with the camera store whenever possible. Resist the urge to go to the camera store, pick them up, look at them, play with them, and then put it down and walk out the door and order it off Amazon. I know you can sometimes save a few dollars that way, mainly with tax, but most of the time they're pretty competitive. And you know what? Until you get into it and you've experienced the frustration of going to like a Best Buy or a Target to try and buy a camera, where the people working there have no clue about photography at all, and they're gonna tell you everything that they've read or heard off a spec sheet, but really don't know anything about it. When you've got to the point where you know enough about it to appreciate how the knowledgeable staff at a camera store can help give you some detailed information in, in kind of those nuances in a camera, they know how to ask you the right questions as far as what are you gonna use it for, here's an option you may have thought of, etc. It's so much more worth it to support your local camera store. Help those guys out because you know what? It's, it's a dying industry as far as the brick and mortar camera store. And it's sad because unfortunately, it's the best way to buy a camera because you can have it right in your hand. And especially when you don't live in a major metropolitan area. You know, I can go four hours away to the Minneapolis St. Paul area and there's a number of these camera stores down there, this chain. Um, if you live in somewhere like New York City, of course you can go right to B&H Photo Video or Adorama or any of these places and you've got the world's largest camera store right there. Not everyone in the world has that capability. So whenever possible, go work with your local camera store, develop a relationship because you know what, they appreciate it and these guys are gonna remember you when you come back and they're gonna help you out. A lot of times they'll be able to do things, you know, throw in some extras or, you know, give you really good advice or maybe they're able to pull some strings and, and get you something that you maybe wouldn't have otherwise had just because you're a return customer to them. So that's my rant. The light is fading and changing and while I've been blabbering away, the one image I really wanted to take down here on the road with some nice light coming, 
the light's gone. So I'm going to have to keep looking and see what I can find. But you guys take care. Have a great day. Tomorrow I do want to talk a little bit about some potential format changes as far as what I'm thinking with this show. I started talking about it yesterday, and you may notice that I told you at the end I'd see you on Monday. Originally I wasn't going to do any videos this weekend and just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it because I need to put a little more thought into how I want to approach this. So stay tuned for that. We'll dive into that a little more as I figure it out in, in my little pea brain here. But you guys take care. Stay warm. I'm going to grab some more pictures because after all, that's what I'm out here for. And uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.